Hey Real Progressives, this is Jackie Lukeman. And as I was out here walking my dog, I had this epiphany. Actually, I had this epiphany yesterday when I had to drive into the office uh, for my regular um, one day a month office visit. See, I work from home. I have the ability to do that and I have the, uh, the privilege of doing that. A lot of people, most people, don't have that privilege um, but I am 100% remote and I only go into the office which is in Chantilly Virginia uh, about once or twice a month just to show my face to network with uh, my teammates you know so that they remember that I'm an actual person and I'm not some phantom <laughs> to be a team player uh, but most people have to go into a physical office every day if they don't go into a physical office um, then they have to go to a physical store, a place, unless they work at like, you know, they work for a call center and they can, you know, call in from a remote location. But for most Americans, being employed means having to go to a place of employment. And this is important to me, especially in this area, because what's behind me right now is uh, what you see there, the, the red, white, and blue vehicle. That's a, a public transportation bus that is a uh, subway station what we call the metro here in Washington DC and we have a really great public transportation system here um, before the subway was built the buses went basically everywhere um, and there really wasn't anywhere in the city that you couldn't get to by metro bus uh, and there were a lot of places out in the close-in suburbs that were very accessible too uh, because Metrobus extended its service all the way out into the close-in suburbs of Maryland and Virginia. But the problem when you get out to those areas were the bus lines were fewer and a lot of them ended uh, at like 10 or 11 o'clock. And you know, 20, 30 years ago that might not have been a problem. But as more people have moved into this area, and more businesses have opened up to accommodate all of those people, all kinds of businesses, restaurants, hotels, uh, technology companies, everything, grocery stores. Um, those businesses needed employees to thrive. And more people moved into this area meant that people needed jobs. So we have this great metro system that I thought was really quite fabulous and compared to other metro systems or public transportation systems in other parts of the country that I've seen it's really one of the nicest uh, we just came from Philadelphia and that public transportation system those trains are terrible but I mean ours are very nice and pretty and we have a lovely color-coded map system that's easy to read but the limitation with a system that is actually as good and as wide reaching as Washington DC's metro system is, is, is glaringly obvious when you have to go to places like Chantilly, Virginia. It's not really a far out suburb. It's, it's maybe 13 miles away from DC, 20 I, I guess. Um, but if you don't have a car, you can't get there because the farthest public transportation goes out there on as far as metro is concerned is to Vienna. And then you have to catch buses from Vienna to wherever you need to go in those areas farther out. Why is that a big deal? Because unlike Washington DC's public transportation system, uh, the Virginia public transportation isn't as comprehensive. They don't have many, that many buses, as many buses, they don't have as many bus routes and the buses don't go everywhere so here I am I'm thinking as I'm driving home yesterday here I am driving home to Southeast DC the area of the city with the highest concentration of poverty the highest concentration of unemployed people especially young unemployed people and I literally live across the street from a subway station that does not connect the people who need jobs with the jobs that are 20 miles away.
every argument that is ever made against expanding the metro system always revolves around money. It's always, and in this area in particular, the issue is that Maryland and Virginia doesn't want to pay any more money to expand the system. They want DC to pay for everything. Um, so we always have those arguments. Meanwhile, unemployed people remain unemployed. Uh, underemployed people remain underemployed. Employers don't have access to people uh, who want jobs. And we keep having these discussions about infrastructure and we, we continue to frame them in terms of money, how much it's going to cost in dollars for us to improve our infrastructure. Well, here's the truth. Here's, here's what the argument really is. Here's, here's what the problem truly is. If we don't fix our infrastructure to not just build uh, and, and repair crumbling bridges and, and failing roads, but if we don't build an infrastructure that connects American workers to American jobs, the American economy will not sustain itself. itself. And, and if you think that, that this is just a problem that occurs in, in urban areas, think about all the people who live out in the country areas, in the rural areas, who, who experience that. There's no great transportation system that connects rural areas to metropolitan areas where jobs are either. So you have people who are living out in the country who can't get to the jobs in the cities too. This isn't just a, an, an urban issue. This is an infrastructure issue. I got it. <laughs> this is an infrastructure issue that is an American issue that affects all of us. So we, we can't continue to have this argument about our infrastructure and limit it just to well, you know, this jurisdiction has to pay more for this and that jurisdiction has to pay more for that. Listen, <laughs> France and England realized the benefit of building a way, of creating a way to increase trade and tourism between their two countries. So they built the channel. They didn't, I'm sure there was some argument over it, but ultimately, the benefit to the people of France and to the people of England and the rest of Europe outweighed however much it cost to build it. And I, and I know it cost in the tens of billions, probably t hundreds of billions of dollars. But they've seen the benefit of building the channel already. We in America need to have that kind of dedication to the universal benefit for all Americans for everything we do. We cannot continue to look at infrastructure spending as this costs too much or this jurisdiction can't afford to do this or we can't afford to raise taxes to pay for that because we know how much of a lie that is now. No, we have to look at this simple, simple argument. Are we willing to spend the money? Are we willing to make the effort? Are we willing to do the work to provide every opportunity for Americans to get to jobs that they want, that need to be filled in order for Americans to have a decent life? If we're not willing to do that, then, then stop hedging around and saying, oh, it's about, it's about tax bases. It's, it's not the right time. It's about money. No, it's not. You don't care. You don't care about the American worker. That's what it boils down to. You don't care about work-life balance when people have to uh, spend two hours to commute from home to their job because the transportation system is that terrible and the housing prices in the areas near jobs are skyrocketed through the roof so that people can't afford to live near where they work. <laughs> Peggy, I am outside. <laughs>
there are trees everywhere. I really can't get away from them. And besides, they make a really lovely backdrop for my video. <laughs> so I, I just had that thought, you know, uh, of the, the, the kind of BS arguments that politicians have been making about why they don't want to make this country work for working people. It's not about money, you all. It really isn't. It's not about money. It's, it's the fact that they don't care about working people like you and me. <laughs> they don't care about the fact that some working people, in order to get a decent job, have to take three buses that take them two and a half hours to get to that job. They don't care that there are people who are commuting from Delaware to work in D.C. because home prices in D.C. have gone through the roof and people can't afford to live here. But this is where most of the jobs are for white collar employees. You know, they don't care that uh, a company like Walmart, love them or hate them, uh, can, can be allowed to pull out of a deal to build a store in a poor uh, neighborhood that had high unemployment simply because Walmart didn't like the fact that the D.C. City Council had agreed to raise the minimum wage to $15 by 2021. There's an empty lot over there right now where Walmart was going to build its store. All because they didn't want to pay people a decent wage six years from now. It's, it's not about money. This, this, this brokenness in the infrastructure of this country to the point where working people can't work because they can't get to the jobs, to the point where the infrastructure doesn't support people who are working so that they can have a decent work-life balance and people aren't stressed out to the point that they, they want to commit road rage because they're sitting in traffic for four hours. This brokenness of an infrastructure where people can, we have the capacity and the, the ability to allow more people to work from home, but agencies and businesses are too greedy to let people do it. That, that's not, it's not because we don't have the money to implement these things. The United States has the highest level of productivity in the world. Nobody's more productive than we are. Nobody. But our wages haven't kept up with our incre increase in productivity over the years, and neither have our benefits. But the people we are working ourselves to death for, oh, they're making record profits. And so are our elected officials who keep telling us that we don't have the money to do any of the things that would help the people who are working themselves to death so that we can have a better life. The politicians who are telling us that we don't have the money to do anything to connect, to, to connect people who want to work with jobs that are there. It is not about money. And, and by the way, as I'm standing here in my neighborhood um, with the metro right across the street, let me dispel another myth for you. This neighborhood is predominantly black, like I said, predominantly poor, poor. unemployment's high over here. But every single day, that metro station across the street, full of people going to work, full of black people going to work. So there's also not this underclass of, of people, black or white or other, that just doesn't want to work in this country. That's a lie. Oh yeah, sure, there are some lazy people in every group of people, yes, there are. But most people want a decent job. The truth is there are all kinds of barriers in, 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 in people's way to keep them from getting that decent job that they want. Everybody I know just wants to work, make money for themselves and take care of their families, have a happy life. But it's hard to do that when the only job you can find is part-time that pays $7.50 an hour. 
It's hard to do that when the jobs that pay a little better are 20 miles away and you have to take the metro for an hour and the bus for another hour and a half to get there. And neither one of those jobs offer for any kind of benefit. It's hard to have a good life when you do have a decent job, but you can't afford to live near where you work. So you have to live 15 miles from where you work and you're commuting in traffic for an hour and a half, two and a half hours each way every day. Uh, I watched the uh, Where to Invade Next documentary. I think I told you this story before uh, that Michael Moore did. And he highlighted the workers in the Faber-Kessel factory in Germany. Uh, the nice people in Germany who make pencils. That's all they do. They make pencils. And these people were extremely satisfied with their job. They were extremely satisfied with their life. Why? Because they, they, were, they were so fulfilled? Because they made pencils? No. They were satisfied with their job and their life because they were able to focus on fulfilling and enriching their lives because they were paid a decent wage on their jobs. They were treated with respect on their jobs. And they uh, were provided the basic services, health care, housing, education, as a right by their government. So they didn't have to stress out about those things, how much they cost, and oh my God, if I get sick, how am I going to pay for it? No. The only reason we don't do that in this country is because those who have the power to change that honestly do not care about working people. It isn't about how much money it's going to cost to get it done, folks. It really isn't. It's all about whether you really care about your fellow man or not. And let's just get down to brass tacks here. Those people who have power, the elites in power in both parties, they honestly don't care about us. So, what are you going to do with that knowledge? What are you going to do with that information now? Are you going to continue to support the status quo? Are you going to continue to let these people who don't care about you and how you're living and how you're supporting your family and the future your family has, you're going to continue to let them tell you that a third party is, is, is a foolish throwaway vote? You can't win with a third party? You're going to continue to let them tell you that the only options you have are bad and worse? Stop letting these greedy, heartless people brainwash you into believing that we have no power. The very first step to realizing how powerful you are is realizing that you've been lied to about the power you have in the first place. I'm going to finish walking my dog. I'll talk to you guys later, Real Progressives. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.